of a term or however long you decide to do it as an educator. And at the end of that time scale, I want you to be able to tell me the food, the clothing, the culture, the currency, the language, the religion. I want you to be, and by language, I want you to be able to tell us five things you can say, and we all try and learn that as well, and so on. And it's a really nice way of getting the kids to, to learn about all manner of things around the world. And here's the crux, back to the motivation slide I told you about. I then say to the kids, and at the end of it, you'll get to build the flag in Minecraft, and they go, yes! And they will give you a week of really hard work with a little tongues up their noses concentrating, because they know that on Friday afternoon, they're gonna to get to build a flag. But I wanted to take it a bit further. I said, well, what if we were to make a flag that was actually as if it was, you know, a moment in time, it's flapping in the wind. Now, in order to do that, we need to do technical drawing. I want the children to be able to understand that it has an elevation, and then it has a plan, and then there's a side elevation as well. Because otherwise, we're not really going to, now they could do it, they could just do it and try it, but I want them to understand the principle of technical drawing. So this was when the teacher said to me, you'll never do it, it's not gonna happen. We teach that, there's a reason we teach it at 12 and 13 years old, it's part of their brain development, and not gonna be able to do it eight and nine. So I just said to the kids, build a building for me. I want you to go down on the ground. I watched, I have to avoid that, that's a minefield. Um, an actual minefield, that's part of our um, refugee crisis uh, lessons. So I said, I'm just gonna choose a, a, a block here. I just want you to build for me a building. So what they do is they build a little building. It doesn't really matter what size it is. Make it long. And I just get it very, very simple. This is a child's work, if you imagine. And then I get them to build it with a slight design piece. And then I say to them, now, I'd like you to make for me a plan of that building. Sorry, that would be the plan. But the plan of the building an elevation of the building, and then a side elevation of the building. And I'm going to show you how to do that on graph paper, and then we're going to do it on plain paper, and we're going to do all the correct measurements. Then I want you to add a chimney, then I want you to add a window, then I want you to make it so on and so on and so on. And before you know it, the children are actually learning technical drawing by using this 3D space. This was eight and nine-year-old girls, a group of four eight and nine-year-old girls, who then took that principle and made it into a British flag. That's a really complex piece of work, I have to say. Um, and they were able to do that in one afternoon. They planned it, they put it on paper, they used it. They first of all just did the flag, then they put the colours into the flag, just the red, then the blue, and so on. And, uh, and then they went off and built it. And only once it was kind of ready and I gave them the stamp of approval, they could shoot off and they could do that. Want to get your kids outside? Have me think about planning uh, maps. So for example, if I just look down at this piece of land here that I've made in a small box, that tree there, is that tree there? This uh, black and white model here is actually the QR code on the other side, which makes that building, that building there. Now we can model little Minecraft maps. This is a great maths exercise teaching children about scale. Let's build a large piece, and then when we're finished, let's scale it down by imagining that one block is actually equivalent to 10. How would you then demonstrate that? But what we can do is we can go one step further. We can then get children to build their school grounds. Let's get them to build the building, and we'll get them to go outside and measure it. Let's get them to then build the uh, the rest of the, the grounds, maybe the local street, maybe the roads that are surrounding it, add the trees and details and stuff. And then, as a teacher, we can go in and we can add, say for example, I wanted to go here, and I was gonna say, right at this front door here, I'm gonna hide a chest. And inside that chest, I'm gonna put a book. I'm just getting a new book. Uh, and that book and quill, is then going to have in it, it's going to have congratulations. The next clue can be found at, I'm going to put that in, we'll sign and close it, teacher's name, pop it in there, and then we'll cover it back over. And then we'll give our children a coordinate because let's think, let's face it, what we have here is key stage two, level three maths, grid referencing. So we've got an X and we've got a Y, and it's all perfectly split up into one meter by one meter blocks. And we can create uh, geocaching. So let's get our children not just geocaching in Minecraft, but geocaching in real life based on Minecraft. So a lot of teachers just now are saying, you know, I need to find a way of getting my kids outdoors. Just geocache. 